Welcome to Keto Life Support, where we make your keto life sustainable, fun, and low stress. I'm Kim Howerton, and I'll be coming to you weekly with some of my keto besties to bring you the practical, real-world keto advice that you need. Quick disclaimer, I am not a doctor, and even if we do have a doctor in the house from time to time, he or she is not your doctor, and nothing we say on this show should be taken as medical advice. Always check in with a trusted medical professional about your own personal medical concerns. Welcome to Keto Life Support. This is Kim Howerton, and this is episode number 92. And this, I think, will be a short episode because I got something I got to get off my chest. So yesterday I was talking with somebody and she mentioned that she was new to keto and she was super confused because she didn't know when her cheat day was supposed to be. And I lost my stuffing. I'm going to say this episode, it's going to be really hard for me not to swear. So um, bear with me. I am not actually (laughs) a completely swear-free zone usually. And so I try very hard, but um, I'm going to have to try extra hard because the number of expletives that will want to come out of my mouth in the episode are probably high. So bear with me. All right. So yeah. And I was like, huh, okay, well, why do you think you need a cheat day? And then we got into it and, you know, there's, there's a lot of talk out there in the world about, but there's two to two. One is like, you need a cheat day. And the other one is like, well, you get a cheat day, right? Like you can have one and, you know, but it makes me so crazy. Let me try and break this down. The word cheat day is super or cheat is super triggering for me. Super, super triggering for me. Did I use it before I had better language? Probably. But here's the deal. What does cheat even mean in this context? I mean, let's look up. I'm going to do that right now. Let's look up what is cheat defined as, right? Act dishonestly or unfairly in order to gain a advantage. So acts dishonestly and unfairly. How does that apply to your eating pattern? Because here's the deal, people. Your body is the arbiter of honesty. It doesn't matter what you meant to do, thought to do, your intentions for doing. Your body cares about how what you do affects it. And so you can't cheat your body. You literally cannot do it. Your body is with you. Your mouth is your body. Your digestive system is your body. Those are all parts of your body. You can't cheat your body. So I don't even get the use of the word cheat. Who are you cheating on? What are you cheating on? I mean, I guess you're cheating on your quote unquote diet, but like, what's your diet, but a set of rules you determined you would live by in terms of your eating behaviors. So you now decided to vary your eating behavior in some way. So now, how is that a cheat again? It's not a cheat. It's a choice. You're making a choice about how you're eating. So I think the word cheat should really not apply to diet at all. And so cheat is out the window. So now, okay, so now you can actually have a grown-up discussion. Because talking about how you're going to cheat and your cheat day and when's my cheat day and can I have a cheat day, I'm not talking about the people that hear this. I'm talking about the influencers out there in the world who encourage this, the trainers, the teachers, just using influencers as kind of a blanket statement, people who influence people's diets. I don't mean they have a big Instagram following necessarily, just that they influence people. When they promote these ideas, it perpetuates this diet culture issue that diets are short term, right? If your diet is such that you can't stop and think, I have a choice to make, I'm going to make this choice, I'm going to make that choice. If life is just a series of choices, then being in a paradigm, I'm using big words instead of swear words, paradigm, being in a situation where you have designed 
your diet so that it is restrictive in a way that you feel the need to rebel against, right? Because cheating is rebellion on some level. Something has gone wrong. And so people out there in the world who are talking about these cheat days, that's an immediate no. That's an immediate fail. That's an immediate what the F from me about what's going on. It is a, as they say, red flag. So if an influencer or teacher or somebody out there is really serious about incorporating what they are referring to as cheat dates in your program, I would have a serious talk with yourself about why you're listening to this person. They might have some other good points, but that point is a really bad point. Now, am I saying that it is inappropriate to ever deviate from a fixed plan? No, I'm not saying that. Am I saying that if you generally don't eat sugar, is it always the wrong choice to eat something that includes sugar? No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying that all of these things should be made as conscious, intentional, thought out choices because you're an adult. If you're listening to this podcast, I hope you're an adult. Very interesting child if you are, but you are an adult. You make choices about your food. You eat things. I mean, sometimes those choices are based entirely on pleasure. That is okay, but it is a choice. Now, some people out there in the world talk about using these quote unquote cheat days, I say with disdain, as a way to sort of like bump up your caloric intake or rev up your metabolism or whatever. And I'm not against the concept of changing up your nutrition in any way, shape or form. I periodize my fat loss. I go through periods where I eat less and periods where I eat more. And I don't necessarily think it's always the wrong idea to have a day, two days, three days, sometime during the week where you have a little bit more food, you eat a little bit more. Those aren't cheat days. Those aren't binge fests. Those are intentionally planned days in which you increase your caloric intake. It's like some days you're going to the store and some days you're going to work and you have different things planned for the day because you have different needs that day and you have different, you know, it's like, no, you know, they'll use excuses about ways in which you can, you know, spend certain days getting in more calories or or doing something that at a pure data level is potentially beneficial. But my honest opinion is so many of these people out there in the world who are trying to sell you on cheat days, buy my program, it has a cheat day. I think they are mostly, I mean, I'm, I'm literally not thinking of any one person. I am not. So I'm not pointing a finger at any person. But my general feeling about people that engage in this kind of discussion is that they have severely disordered eating patterns. And they generally are very restrictive with themselves about their diet. And so they kind of decide on the day that they open up the door to eating more food, it's not just a slightly more food day, it's a binge day. And so they just continue to cycle through the restrict, binge, restrict, binge cycles that are an eating disorder. Having had an eating disorder, I am familiar with these patterns, and I am a big no to continuing to tolerate these patterns. These patterns still live somewhere inside my brain and I tell them to shut it because they want to come out and they're not allowed in the active part, right? So it really comes down to, and I don't mean micromanaging when I say conscious, that's actually anxiety instead of consciousness, but your diet choices should be made consciously and intentionally and the way that you eat should be intentional and it shouldn't be like, I don't know how to manage myself, so I'm going to let myself binge once a month, once a week, once a whatever, because the other times I'm going to be so incredibly restrictive and I got to let off steam sometime. No, there's this thing called flexible dieting and flexible dieting is just the idea that you include things that are not normally in your diet, or I guess there's no not normally in your diet when flexible dieting is the way I'll say it, right? It's like you can include all these foods, but they have to fit in your macros this is also a place where if it fits your macros comes in, but a lot of flexible dieters are say, no, they're not. If it fits your macros, they believe in eating like good, healthy food. Most of the time, it's more like 80, 20. It's not like 
you know, all about binging. But flexible dieting has behind it this idea that if you are constantly restricting and then having a cheat day, there's going to be a problem. And a flexible dieter did a podcast where he talked about comparing his diet to a person who did very, very clean, restrictive eating all the time, and then had a binge day once a week, um, which, you know, I'll see people promoting in the keto world, like keto, and then a binge. They're not calling it a binge, but I am. And he compared his diet. And he's like, Oh, if I average our food intake over the whole week, I'm eating this flexible dieter was like, I eat less crap food, and I eat less calories, right? So I bring this up not to say that all of you should be flexible dieters. Most of the people listening to the podcast on keto have tried that and it didn't work for them. But what I'm saying is you can actually in a binge destroy an entire week's worth of effort, which is not what I think you're doing that entire week's worth of effort for. So I really want to say, and I know I've done an episode similar to this before, but I was triggered and I had to talk about it and hopefully you know, repeating concepts sometimes is important. If anyone in your sphere is trying to encourage you to do a binge day, and I know how it is where you feel like I'm not at the weight I want to be at yet. I'm not as good at this as I want to be yet. I should listen to these people who look brighter and shinier and prettier than me and, you know, wear a smaller size than me and have bigger muscles than me. And I should just listen to them because they must know what they're doing. And the reality is a lot of the people out there on social media promoting various diets, one, were never overweight, two, have probably had plastic surgery, three, are probably taking some sort of performance enhancing drugs, right? Like now I'm I'm throwing a lot of shade there, but I'm saying you don't know what's going on in the background of their life. And quite honestly, a lot of those pictures of people having like celebratory cheaty bingy days, like I bet you they don't eat all that food. They're just taking that food picture for fun. Now, if you decide you want to include foods that are not normally on your plan, I'm not saying that's a problem. I'm not saying that's a problem at all. I'm not saying it's a good thing. I'm just saying it's a choice you can make. But please, for the love of all that is holy, remember it's a choice. There is no such thing as a cheat. There's no such thing as cheating on your diet. Uh, You cannot be dishonest with your body. Your body is there with you while you're doing it. Okay? So... I hope this just helps give a dose of reality that keeps you on the straight and narrow when you decide to set up behaviors that will be your downfall. I think that's enough about that subject. I was going to go a little deeper into some other things, but you know what? I'll save it for another episode. I think I've made my point. I hope you have a great week. Stay on the straight and narrow, people. Even if straight and narrow is pretty wide and loose, but it's honest. All right, guys. All right. Bye. Thank you so much for joining us for this episode of Keto Life Support. Want more information? Want show notes? Want to suggest a topic? Just head over to ketolifesupport.com. That's where all that kind of thing can go on. By the way, I have a request. If you could go to your podcast host and hit subscribe, we would really, really appreciate it. And what would be even more awesome is if you could write a review. And what would be even more awesome than that is if you could write like a really flattering review. Just asking, you know, you do you. All right. So thanks so much for joining us. I'm thrilled that you're part of the Keto fam. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.